Good morning and welcome to Foundations Church. We're so glad that you chose to join us today. If you're new here this morning, we'd love to invite you to visit the Connect Center following service. You can get all the information you need and find out how to get involved. SC Kids is headed to the movies to see The Incredibles 2 on July the 6th. Their plan is to see a 10 a.m.-ish early movie. However, once the movie times are listed, they'll post the exact time to attend this event. So stay tuned to get all the information once it's listed. FC Met. Your next event on July the 23rd at 6.30 p.m. is called Axes and Wings. And apparently, you're not going to gather around a cute little coffee table with your latte and talk about your favorite book like we do. But you're going to be throwing axes and eating with your hands. So obviously, since this is such a manly event, space is limited and you need to RSVP online. The food's on us and you need to bring 15 bucks to throw axes. I hope you come back with all your fingers. Hey, many of you may not know that we have our very own app here at Foundations Church. This is basically a way for you to get all the information right in one place on your phone. You can get calendar and event information for each of the ministries. You can listen to podcasts, watch videos. It's just a way for you to stay up to date and connected for all that's going on around here. So go ahead and download our app today. Hey everybody, it's mingle time. This is the time where you stand up, you greet someone around you and make someone feel welcome today. You got a minute and a half. My name is Brian Clare, and on an annual basis in Pamplona, they have the running of the bulls. I am an individual who ran with the bulls. Um, if you need travel advice about that trip, just let me know. Sometimes when we talk about how to help other people, it can be difficult to know what we can do. A lot of times we can think of more obstacles than we can options. When you hear the word food, for most of us, food brings to mind friends and family reminders of great times together. There are some people who the word food represents a consistent and frequent source of stress. One easy way that you can help people is through our Box Out Hunger program. We're going to have a collection box in the Connect Center and we ask you to drop off non-perishable food items. Those food items are going to be donated to the Northeast Oklahoma Food Bank. And in case you're wondering, is that going to get back into our neighborhoods for our neighbors? The answer is yes. There are seven partner communities in the zip code of 74135. And those seven organizations can pick up items from the food bank and then distribute it through their respective programs. Now, from recent communication with the food bank, they have some current needs. Small jars of peanut butter, canned fruit, and from their boxed meals as well. If each family could just bring one item per week, I feel certain we could make a 
positive impact right here in Tulsa. Why not make it something that the kids help you with on the weekly trip to the store, where they get to choose out a can of something that's gonna be donated to help somebody get a better memory when they hear the word food. So, what's next? Let's look to do something that's possible. Is it possible for you, when you go to the store each week, to get one item and bring it to church to donate to others? If you can do this, we're positive we can make a great impact right here in Tulsa. So, involve the family and let's help box out hunger. A lot of us are always wondering, how can we make a difference? Um, our schedules are busier than ever, um, and it's just tough, tough, tough to kind of really know where can I make a difference, how can I make a difference, and we want to make it easy to make an impact in other people's lives who are in need. And one of our, our, our whole reason we are here, our whole, our whole mission statement is to make Jesus famous in all that we do. And one of the things we are doing right now we're starting churches in Kenya to places that you probably will never go to that I have a tough time pronouncing, um, to be really honest. And um, we're just like, we're making Jesus famous and, and to the utter ends of the places of the earth that we'll never go to. And in the process of that, we've seen churches neglect their front yard and their backyard. And Foundation Church, we want to make sure we're making Jesus famous right here in Tulsa. Right here in this neighborhood, there is need. About every week we have people come to the church. They're, they're not necessarily looking for handouts. They're just needing food. And we have our Project Hunger. This is not taking the place of Project Hunger, where we take food to people's houses. This is in addition to that. We want to enable all of us to be found people who have a part in being a light to this world and meeting a very tangible need that were Jesus with skin on. And so get your kids involved, get involved, bring something. We've got two boxes now here in the Connect Center. It's the bright green room as you're going into the lobby, hang a left, that you can bring your non-perishable items and it's making a difference and people are getting excited because they get to be a part of making somebody's lives better and making food not be a, a, a source of stress and anxiety, but man, being part of the solution. So if you can help us out, that is fantastic. Second thing I want to tell you is this, Foundation Church, there are great things happening at FC. Um, man, we are having an explosive summer, and I want to encourage all of you here, all of you here, nobody's exempt. We believe found people find people, and I want to encourage you, summertime is a great time, and you wouldn't believe this, uh, how easy it is to bring people with you to church. Because the reality is this, I talked about this in the Facebook video this, this past week, 92% of New Year's resolutions have already failed, okay? Not, think about that, 92% of all New Year's resolutions have failed. And probably a great majority of that is to find a church. Maybe they just didn't find a place that they could click into. Um, it just was too hard. They didn't have anybody to go with. Man, help somebody find home. Help somebody find community. Help somebody find a church where their life can be changed, where they can hear a story, a, a, a presentation of the gospel that will change their life. And so I'm asking all of you, I know we're full, we're crowded, let's create chaos. Chaos is a good thing, right? There's bad problems and there's good problems. And we want to keep making sure we're a church that's growing. I, I will let you know we are looking at possibly at some time going to a third service, of moving buildings, all that stuff. We don't apologize for that because we're going to keep staying fruitful. We're going to keep growing. We're going to keep pursuing what God has called us to pursue. And it's not a number. It's people's lives. It's people's stories and seeing life change happen on a daily and weekly basis. And Foundation Church, that happens when you and I go out and we ask people to come with us. So let's make sure we're staying found people that find people because God is doing great things and I am pumped to get to be the pastor um, because you guys are the best congregation to be a pastor to. So thank you um, for all that you guys are doing. Today we have a standalone message. Usually we're in series, but today I want to talk to you um, a, a kind of about a, a sermon that's entitled Roots and Stuff. Roots and Stuff. This could have been a redneck series, um, but it's called Roots and Stuff, and it's um, really 
um, about us developing roots in the Lord. When um, you went, growing up, there was the greatest gaming system ever created. Um, when I was a kid, it was the original NES, the original Nintendo. Um, and when you got the starter kit, when you got the original Nintendo, you got, if, if you were lucky, you got not just the console and not just the two controllers, but you got the gun and you got Duck Hunt. Remember Duck Hunt, right? And you got a game called Super Mario Brothers that was with it. It had Super Mario Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt on the same cartridge, and you'd blow in the cartridge and then put it in if it started acting wrong, right? That's what we did, right? That's it. You guys are like, oh yeah, um, and you accused the video game of cheating, and then you hit it, and you broke it, and it wasn't good, but here's the deal. That was the starter kit. Um, that was what you got to begin with, but if you wanted to develop into what we term a gamer, if you wanted to develop into a person that was willing to waste hours upon hours to conquer the legend of Zelda, if you were going to be a gamer and you were going to finally beat Mike Tyson in Mike Tyson's punch out, and that was before he started biting people's ears, if you were going to be the master of tech mobile, the original, if you were going to play Contra and remember the cheat code so you could actually beat the game, you had to invest in those games because you didn't become an original gamer like that which out without investing. You couldn't just do that on the starting package, the startup package. You had to do something more. And here's why I'm telling you this is that for a lot of us when it comes to following Christ, when it comes to following the Lord and living out this whole Jesus follower thing, we kind of know the starter kit of what the church tells us. We, we kind of know, okay, yeah, I call it the PBC starter kit, right? You know it. You, you should be praying. Okay, yeah, I know I should be praying. If I'm going to grow, I've got to be a person of prayer. And, and let me say this. I am not discounting these three things I'm telling you. They should be active. They are key. They are fundamental in your relationship with Jesus Christ. we got to be people of prayer. Absolutely, we have to be people of prayer. The second one is out of the PBC is the Bible. You guessed it. You're like, yeah, Bible's the second one. Um, you need to be in the Word. And, and it's amazing how quickly we get away from the core fundamental things, and we don't know why we're not growing. It's because we're not doing the main things that we should be doing as followers of Christ. you got to be in the Word, man. If God's going to speak to you, most of the time, He speaks to you through you reading the Word. Many of us, the only time we hear the Bible is when we come here. Man, get in your Bible. Get into the Word of God and let the Word of God speak to you and guide your life. The third thing out of the PBC is church, right? we got to come to church. We need to go to church. Um, it helps us develop relationships. It helps us worship corporately and grow and serve and do all these things. And um, we, the PBC starter kit, right? Prayer, Bible, and church. And most of us, this is what we think we should be doing. This is, you know, kind of, if I'm doing this, I've checked all the boxes off. But, but I, I got to say, as your pastor... There's other stuff, which is a really deep theological word today, I know, um, that God wants to do in your life and in my life as we follow him. And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 7, Paul says this. He says, and now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow. It's not just about a one-time choice. It's not about a one-time decision, right? A lot of us, we raise our hand for salvation. We say the sinner's prayer, and we think, okay, that's it. No, 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 no. It's not just about a one-time choice. You must continue to follow him. And verse 7 is key. Let your roots grow down into him. Develop roots not just a surface Christian, not just a startup kit Christian, right? Let your roots grow down in him and let your lives be built on him, on him. Don't let your lives just be built on the church, right? Don't let your lives just be built on emotion. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Let your roots grow down into him. So if we're going to grow 
roots, if we're going to grow deeper, right? We're not just going to be a starter kit Christian. If we're going to grow deeper, I believe they're stuff, right? Like when you ask your kid, what are they doing? Stuff, right? Probably means they're doing something they shouldn't. What are you looking at? Stuff. Um, I believe there is stuff, real deep theological word this morning, stuff that God wants to do in our lives that isn't in the PBC starting kit. And so I want us to develop roots through stuff. So how do we develop roots through stuff? The first way is this, is that you lean into the hard stuff. You lean into the hard, if we're gonna continue to develop deep in the Lord, if we're gonna develop deep roots in the Lord, hear me, you've got to learn to lean in to the hard stuff. There is a reason when you are growing, they call it growing pains, right? It hurts to grow. Physically, it hurts to grow. You're being stretched, you're growing. As you get stronger, you're doing it in the gym, and when you've had a really good gym day, your muscles are sore because they are growing. You've torn it down and you're building them up. There are growing pains. And can I tell you, most of the times when I am growing the most is when I'm going through the hardest moments in my life. And there's so many times that when we go through the hard things, we just want to get through it instead of lean into it. And we don't learn anything. We're not developed in the hard times. We're, we're not allowing God to develop us. We're not allowing God to make us more in his image. We're just trying to get through it. Are you getting through it or are you leaning in to it? Because I can tell you this much. The two times I grew the most in my relationship with the Lord, two seasons that, man, I was growing was when we started this church and when my mom passed away. Man, there was high anxiety, there was high stress, there was audacious faith in starting this church, and when my mom passed away, man, it hurt. It's not what I wanted to go through. It was painful walking through that process and walking through that loss, and there's gonna be moments in time where you don't wanna go through it, where there's anxiety, where there is stress, where it's hard, where it's not fair, where it just hurts, and you've got to either, you're either going to ignore the pain or you're gonna lean into it. I love what C.S. Lewis says. He says, we are not necessarily doubting that God will do the best for us. We are wondering how painful the best will turn out to be, right? We're wondering how, how painful is this best gonna turn out to be? But what I have noticed is this, is that the painful stuff, the hard stuff, it produces the good stuff. It, it really does. The painful stuff, the hard stuff that you may be going through right now, if you will allow it to, it will produce the good stuff that God wants to do in you. It says this in Romans chapter five, verse three through five. It says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that our suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope, and hope does not, dis does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. When's the last time you've thanked God for producing endurance in your life, right? Like, God, I just want you to produce endurance in me. Man, God, just produce it. Well, guess what? You're going to have to go through some hard times. You're going to have to go through some, man, trying times because the only way that endurance is produced is by going through the hard stuff, is by leaning into the hard stuff. The only way character is developed, for the most part, is when you need character, right? And a lot of us, the reason we aren't growing roots down and we're not producing and we're not becoming more like Christ is because, man, we're just trying to get through it and letting, instead of letting God produce the good stuff in our life. I, I, I kind of recognize it like this. Um, when I go to the gym, the one day I hate at the gym is legs day. I hate legs day. It probably is uh, uh, almost every guy in this place hates legs day. Love chest day, love arms day. Why? Because that's what everybody sees when I'm swimming. Nobody goes, man, Justin, those legs though. <laughs> those legs, boy, them legs. Woo. 
His legs are looking good. Right? Yeah, I mean, they're like, man, your arms are looking good. Why? Because people see that. They don't say that about my chest, but, you know, um, they're just like, man, you're, you're starting to look kind of trim and I'm feeling all of it, Justin. You know, that's good. And, and we want to work on the things that everybody sees. But you know what I need to work on the most that does the best for my body, especially long terms? Legs. I don't want to do it because it hurts. It hurts. I'm weak at it. I'm not good at it, right? I, I'm not. And that's what we don't, we don't want to go through the hard times because we're not good at going through the hard times. We don't want to go through the hard times because it's hard to go through the hard stuff. It hurts to go through the hard stuff. But can I tell you, when you allow God to speak and develop you through the hard stuff, that's when the good stuff, the endurance, the character, the stuff that everybody else can't see but is essential because I am a big believer that your public life should mirror your personal life. That what you're professing in front of everybody and living on Sunday should match up on Friday night. That's growing roots in him. And the only way that endurance and that, it's going through the suffering, through the trials. It says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 through 10. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults the hardships, the persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And Christ's power can never have a chance to work through your weakness if you never allow it. Man, lean into the hard stuff. And don't just ignore. Don't just try to put your head down and get through it. Man, lean into it and be like, if I'm going to go through it, I'm going to develop through it. If I'm going to have to go through this, I'm going to let God develop me through this. I didn't ask to go through this, but my goodness, I'm going to come out different instead of being the same person. Let God develop you. Grow roots, grow endurance, grow character, grow hope, grow these things. If you're going to go through these things, don't go through it aimlessly, but lean into it and let God develop the good things that only God can develop. Let God perfect his strength in you instead of trying to do it on your own. You're not called to do it on your own. Lean into him, not onto your own understanding, but lean into him when you're going through the hard stuff. How do we continue to grow roots through stuff? Second thing is we listen to the difficult stuff. We listen to the difficult stuff. What do you mean you listen to the difficult stuff? The first way is this, we listen when God speaks. We listen when God speaks. We listen when God says stuff, right? Many of us, we're living at a volume that's so loud that we can't hear the voice of God when he does speak. Everything's so fast, so loud, so quick. It's now, 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 now. And we expect when God speaks to speak to us like a burning bush moment with Moses. Can I tell you, for most of us, for most of us, you're not going to have that burning bush moment. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It would be really cool. Justin, I would pee my pants. You know, I would be like, ah. Some of you, I mean, maybe you're like Kevin Kunkel who's got donkeys at his house. You're expecting God to speak to you like Balaam through a donkey. Um, Probably not going to happen. If so, Kevin, put this down. I know it got legalized, but you got to put it down. You know, um, here's the deal. Most of the time when God speaks to us, it's like he spoke in 1 Kings chapter 19. It wasn't in the tornado, it wasn't in the nadir, right? It wasn't in the earthquake, it wasn't in the fire, but it was in the still small voice. It was in the whisper. And you know what I've, I, I have noticed about me? My understanding, probably most of our understanding, is that we think when God speaks to us, it's always going to be ooey gooey. Right? It's always going to be like in a praise and worship song, right? Or it's going to be this poetic thing, and it's going to be ooey-gooey, and it's going to give me all the feels, and it's going to make me feel so much better. And there's times where God, absolutely, God brings encouragement, He brings hope, He brings strength, He speaks life. But can I tell you, a lot of times, it's not ooey-gooey. When, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, He's like, stop that. Stop it. Right? 
Like, like Friday night and worship night, I just had to put my hands down because the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. He's like, you know what, Justin? You're so impatient right now and you're getting so aggravated and so frustrated and you know what? I'm trying to develop patience and if you would stop being impatient, maybe I could develop it in you. And I'm like, okay, dang, sorry, God, you know? Most of the time when God speaks, I wouldn't say most of the time, but many times when God speaks, it's not this ooey gooey thing, it's the stuff you need to hear. It's not necessarily the stuff you want to hear, but it's the stuff you need to hear. Here's what it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11. It says, my child, don't reject the Lord's discipline, and don't be upset when he corrects you. But what do we do when we hear something we don't like? We just shut off, right? Tune off. No, 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 that's not from the Lord. No, no, probably is, because you didn't want to hear it in the first place. When, when I correct my kids, um, when, when I come in, and I, maybe they've done something wrong, maybe, maybe there's, there's just something, they haven't even done something wrong, but they're not doing something right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, okay, yeah, I see what you're trying to do, but let me bring correction and show you what to do. And it, this never happens about math or schoolwork, okay? Um, let me just put that disclaimer out there. But when I do, I, I, I'm not doing it because I hate my kids, I'm not doing it because I'm like, you know what, I don't really care about you, but I'm gonna bring correction and discipline. No, 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 the reason I'm bringing correction, the reason I want them to do something the right way or to do it better, or maybe they're doing something wrong and I care enough about them to bring correction and discipline to their life is because I love them and I want them to be the best them. And can I tell you, it's the same, but even more so with your heavenly father. The only reason he's speaking correction and discipline to you, the only reason he's saying no about about this is because he wants the best for you. Understand, he wouldn't discipline you and he wouldn't correct you if he didn't love you. So stop plugging your ears and saying, la, 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 I can't hear you, I can't hear you. No, 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 I'm gonna do this anyways and start listening to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and how he's speaking through the word to you and listen to the stuff the Holy Spirit's saying to you. The other thing I would tell you is this. When I say listen to the hard stuff, well, what do you mean? Listen when people say tough stuff, especially when they love you. Listen to people when they say the tough stuff, but especially, especially when they love you. You go to any school right now, you go to any school when they're in session, and you can, you can pick it out. There is two groups of kids. There's two groups of teenagers. There's the good kids and the bad kids, right? They may be jocks, they may be preps, they may be book nerds, they may be whatever it is, but you got your good kids and you got your bad kids. What dictates good kids? And sorry guys, you're the bad kids today, right? So bad kids are on this side, the good kids are on this side. And some of you are like, I really need to be on this side. So what listens to, what, what makes up the good kids? The good kids are, are this, is that they listen to their coaches, they listen to their teachers, they listen to their parents, they listen to their counselors, and they listen when they're being corrected. They listen when they're wrong because they know their parents, their teachers, their coaches, their counselors are for them even when they're saying the tough things and they don't just listen. Listening is hearing and applying, right? Listening is hearing and applying because a lot of us hear but we don't listen. And, and we listen and we, that makes a good kid because all of a sudden what the kid was doing wrong, now he's doing right. And he's doing better in school, he's doing better in, you know, on the team, he's doing better in life because he's listening and applying. What makes a bad kid? Sorry all of you, what makes you bad? Realistic. See, I have a realistic side right here. I just knew Dennis was over here so I had to call it the bad kids. Um, <laughs> is that you hear it but you don't apply it. You hear it but you're like, they hate my guts. You hear it, but you're like, well, they didn't ever reform me in the first place. Well, my parents don't care about me. What are you talking about? You hear it, but that teacher hates me. They don't want me to make a B. What? Like they would be thrilled if you made a C, right? Or even a D, just get it past an F, and we're, we got some traction here, right? That's what is the difference between the good and the bad. And here's what's amazing to me. When we become adults, when we hit, we're still listening to our professors and we may turn our parents off because what do they know? They're just paying for us to go through college, right? Like whatever. 
But we're like, oh, my professor said this, and your parents have been saying that, and they're like, oh, geez. Okay. But once we graduate college, we're like, well, I'm not listening to my parents. You know, <laughs> I'm, whoa. <laughs> I'm 25 years old. What are they? Do? I'm not going to turn out like them. And you hit about 35, and you start talking to your mom and your dad, and you're like, so what? Why, why, why did you do it this way, right? Like, what did you do when you were here? And, and you're like, why did I not talk to them when I'm 25, and now I've made 10 years of mistake at age 35? Here's the deal. You can have a master's degree, but that doesn't mean you're a master of life. It, it doesn't. When we stop listening, we stop growing. And you, God has planted and he has put people in your life that are for you. And they love you enough to tell you the tough stuff. Will you listen to this tough stuff? Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31 through 33 says this. If you listen to constructive criticism, not all criticism. Some of you, you listen to everybody's criticism. Stop listening to everyone. If it's not constructive, stop listening to it. How do you know it's constructive or if it's just criticism? Is it personal or is it beneficial? Because if it's personal, man, that's just destructive criticism. If it's beneficial, it's constructive criticism. If you listen to constructive criticism, you'll be at home among the wise. If you reject discipline, you only harm yourself. But if you listen to correction, you grow and under you grow roots. You grow in understanding. Fear of the Lord teaches wisdom. Humility precedes, come, comes before honor. Can I tell you, if you're not willing to listen, you've got too much pride. Because pride always speaks, but humility always listens. Pride is always talking and always knows the answer. If when somebody's talking to you, you're like, I know, I know, I know. Can I tell you, you have a pride issue. And maybe you're like, whoa, that's pretty strong. No, that's pretty true. If you're always, I know, I know, I know, no, 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 no. Shut it down and listen. Listen. Can I, can I tell you, I've got people... And he knows who he is, who, who talks to me, who's like, Justin, you said this, and this was wrong. Hey, you, I know it's your heart, but man, you said this. And he brings correction. You know what? When he talks to me, I don't go, but, but you don't understand. Oh, I know. I know what I said. I, no, I don't. I'm like, okay, I did say that. I'm sorry. I need to correct that. I need to not say that in the future. You know, I, I bring, I listen to it because I understand I don't have to have it all figured out, and I never will have it all figured out. The only way I'm going to grow as a person is to listen to the people that are for me that God has put in my life. Are you listening to the hard stuff? Are you growing in wisdom? Are you growing in understanding? Because if you're not listening, you are growing in pride instead of understanding. Listen to the hard stuff so that you can develop roots. How do we continue to grow through stuff? I love this. You do new stuff. You do new stuff. Some of you, the most spiritual thing you can hear today is go do new stuff, right? Go do something new. Stop knitting your life away and go do something new. Stop playing computer games bedazzled and bejeweled and go do something new. I love what Theodore Roosevelt said. He says, the country needs, and unless I mistake its temper, the country demands bold, persistent experimentation. It's common sense to take a method and try it. If it fails, admit it frankly and try another. But above all, try something. Try something. And some of you, can I tell you what keeps us from trying new things? It's when we failed at old things. And some of you have failed and it's made you leery of trying something new. This is no guarantee that you're going to succeed at everything you do. That's not this message. That's not this sermon. But it doesn't mean that you stop trying something new. Two weeks ago, um, my youngest daughter, Chloe, said, Dad, I want to hunt frogs. I want to hunt frogs. And we had bought waders. We've got a pond right by our house. I said, let's go do it. I got waders. You got waders. Let's go. So we strapped our waders on. We got our head flashlights on. Um, we, and we went down in the dark. And um, we kind of live in the woods. And there's bats. There's bats all over the place. 
And when we got down there, like I look up one time and a bat comes like this and goes, woo. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'm like freaking out. Um, I've got my shovel down there, and there's frogs all over the place. There's bullfrogs. She caught this one. This one's, um, if you go to the next picture, we named this one Mufasa because it was actually really, really big. And I know my, my Debbie is freaking out right now because she hates frogs. Um, but if you hate frogs, you would hate this pond. But I'm telling you, it was so fun. She's grabbing stuff. I'm like, there's one, there's one. And we're walking through the pond. And we got a waders on. And I'm pretty sure our neighbors are like, what in the world is going on over there? Because we're yelling and we're like, that's a huge one. And we're putting it in. And we really, we didn't kill them. We didn't eat the legs or anything like that. That's gigging, I learned. Um, but we went frog hunting and we had so much fun. But can I tell you what else there was? out there while we were frog hunting? Snakes. <laughs> Me and Chloe are walking and I'm about to take a step and there's one in a little puddle. And she goes, Dad, there's a snake. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I like, try to kill it with a shovel and it just goes on. I'm like, what? There were snakes. Can I tell you, we had a blast. But it was also really scary because there were bats and snakes out there. I'm not going to pretend to be Daniel Boone at this moment, although I am the Daniel Boone of the 918. Um, but <laughs> here's the deal. When you do new things, there's going to be excitement. Man, there's going to be adrenaline. It's going to be new. But can I tell you, it's going to be scary. There's going to be bats and there's going to be snakes on your adventure. And you can either, man, have the courage to keep stretching yourself and doing the new stuff or you can stay stuck doing the old stuff. But can I tell you, man, the same road leads to the same direction. It leads to the same destination. And some of you that you've been doing the same habits and it's still producing the same person and you're wanting to grow deeper and you're wanting to become something new and something, a better version of you, you can't do that still doing the same things with the same habits. Do something new. Engage in something that God is calling you to. And that's why the second point was so huge. Listen to the hard stuff because some of you, you're engaging in stuff God's never called you to engage in in the first place. And you're wondering, why you fail time after time after time because you're listening to your idea instead of the God idea. And there's a great big difference in that. You got to listen to the hard stuff so that you can engage in the new stuff. It says this in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. It says, one day Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. And he noticed two empty boats at the water's edge for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied. I want you to understand, Peter doesn't know this Jesus guy. He's like, hey, wait, 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 wait. So I'm impressed. He says, Master, Master, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were so full that the fish began, that they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. And when Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I am such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with them. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. And Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Can I tell you, when you look at Jesus's ministry, he was always involved in new things. He was always involved in doing new stuff, right? When he raised Lazarus from the dead, he didn't go back like 90 days later and say, hey, Lazarus, I want you to die again. And we're going to relive this whole thing again to, to wow everybody. When he healed the lepers, he didn't go back to the lepers and say, hey, guys, I, I know I healed you, but I need you to go back to the leper colony and rub up against them and see if we can't start having some limbs fall again because that was an awesome moment. So let's recapture the good old days, right? If you are caught up in the good old days, you are a prisoner of your past instead of staying a student of the new. 
And some of you, God wants to do new stuff in you and through you, but he's not going to do it doing the same old thing. Man, God is a God of doing new stuff, new things, and you've got to have the courage and the gusto and the guts to go after the new stuff because he has new dreams, he has new provisions, he has new paths, and he wants you to develop new roots in him that go deeper, that you're still depending on him, you're still relying on him, and you're growing roots. And that happens when you engage in the new stuff. What has he been asking you to do that you've been, la- been delaying to do? Because I'm telling you, if you're going to do the new stuff, it always takes obedience. It always takes obedience. The last thing is this, and i got to hurry. How do we go grow roots through stuff? We understand this, is that we realize God wants to add stuff, not always take away stuff. God wants to add stuff, not always take away stuff. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 10 says this, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities... Not just one time, but in increasing measure. They're constantly increasing. They will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you feel ineffective and unproductive in your walk, can I tell you, these aren't increasing in your life. These aren't being added to in your life. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. I love what it says in the New Living Translation, the very end of verse 10. It says, if you do these things, you will never fall away. Can I tell you, salvation does not depend on good works, but it always produces good works. Salvation, your salvation is not dependent on you being good, but it always results in you doing good. Man, for some of us, our whole relationship is, God, I'm going to give you my sin, I'm going to give you my unforgiveness, I'm going to give you my hurt, I'm going to give you my pain, but we haven't allowed God to add to us. And God wants to add to you. Man, he wants to bring perseverance into your life. He doesn't want you to just have faith. He wants you to grow roots into him. He doesn't just want to take away all your junk. He wants to add good stuff. Man, he wants you to be, your life to be vibrant in the fruit of the Spirit, in the gifts of the Spirit. And, and Peter knew what he was talking about when he says this. Man, if you do these things, if you add these things, you will never fall away. Peter knew what he was talking about, right? He's the one that fell away. He's the one that denied Jesus Christ three times and went back to his old life and started living his life the way he used to before he ever met Jesus. And he's saying, man, listen to me. I know what I'm talking talking about 2 Peter 1, verse 5 through 10. If you can do this to-do list, if you can add these things to your life, that's when you become productive. And that's when you become effective. And God wants to add new stuff if you'll simply allow him to do it. But you gotta let him do the work. Man, you gotta put the work in too and allow yourself to be productive and allow yourself to be developed in him. Because if you'll do that, the promise is this. The promise is this out of 2 Peter 1. You'll never fall away and you'll be productive and effective as you, go, as you grow roots through his stuff. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for today. Lord, there's so many different ways. God, I truly believe there's many of us in this place. God, we got the starter kit down. We've got the praying down. We've got the reading our Bible and coming to church, and we've got that down. But Lord, you want to make us effective and productive. And Lord, for some of us, we've just left our relationship there uh, of hitting to-do list. And God, that's not a relationship. That's just responsibility. But Lord, our relationship happens when we start leaning into the hard times. Me and Casey grew closer. We grew as a couple as we went through hard things together. 
And God, we grow closer and we depend on you more when we go through the hard, when we lean into you, when we lean into the hard times, instead of just putting our head in the sand and pretending that nothing bothers us, nothing's affecting us, nothing's disappointing us, nothing can hurt us. God, let us lean into you and let us lean into the hard stuff. For some of us, it's just about listening listening to the hard stuff, listening to the difficult things. Some of us are so full of pride that we can't hear you. God, if it's not what we want to hear, then we won't listen. But Lord, I pray that you would give us, your word says this all the time, ears to hear, ears to hear, ears to hear. Let him who have ears to hear, hear. Let him listen. Your word says that it's the wise man that will listen and applies. He hears your word and he applies your word. God, I I pray that we would hear your words, that you're speaking to us through your still small voice. We'd hear the people that, that you have put in our lives that are sharing constructive criticism, that are sharing hard things with us and that we wouldn't just talk our way through life, but we would listen so that we can grow in understanding and wisdom and we can grow roots that are established in your wisdom and your understanding. God, that we would engage in new things. God, that we would, man, let you add things. Because God, really, the whole purpose of this whole thing of following you isn't to become a better Christian. It's, it's to become a better follower of you. Lord, it's to become a better follower of you. It's not about fulfilling religious responsibilities. It's about following after you, becoming more like you, letting you add things to our lives and not just giving you the junk, but giving you our whole entire life so that you can add things. Because Lord, you are way more about building us than tearing us down. And so Lord, I pray that we would allow you to build us up so that we can be productive, that we can be effective and that we can have the promise that we will never fall away if we do what the apostle Peter was saying in his words. Lord, I pray right now, let us look at the stuff you've been trying to do in us. And God, I pray that as a result of this message, we would grow roots in you. In Jesus' name, I pray with heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. If you're here and you say, Justin, I'm here. And I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to give you that chance. Today, if you're here and you just say, you know what? I'm not where I need to be and I need to recommit my life. Man, there's things in my life that, that I just need to come home. And there's no better way to put it. I've been, I've drifted. I've drifted from where I should be. And, and I need to get things right with the Lord. I need to recommit my life. When I count to three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And we're going to lead you in a prayer. We're not going to have you stand up. We're not going to embarrass you. But what we believe is God sees a hand and he changes a heart. And so this morning, if that's you, when I get to three, make the best decision, the best choice that you can make. One, two, three. Is there anyone here this morning? You say, Justin, that's me. There's one hand. There's two hands. Is there anyone else who say, Justin, I want to join these two hands that are lifted before we go any further in service. Is there anyone else here today? Yeah, I see your hand. There's three hands. Is there anyone else? You say, Justin, that's me today. And I want to join these three hands before I go any further in service today. Man, before I go through another day, through another moment, I know there's a change and there's something that needs to happen in my life and in my relationship with them. If you raise your hand, if you please repeat this prayer after me and mean it from your heart. God, I come before you today and I confess that I've sinned, that I've messed up, that I've drifted away. God, I ask for your forgiveness. God, I ask that your grace and love would enter my life. I turn away from the life that I was living to grab hold of the life you have for me. I confess you, Jesus Christ, to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm going to live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we give these three individuals that raised their hand a huge round of applause? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, if this is your first time here, or maybe you just made a decision for the